Hello, welcome back to Quotes of Interest. I am one of two hosts, Joshua, and here's my other host, Andrew. Hey. Hey. Well, <clears throat> well, you know how much I love 1984. So we already did one quote by them, and I just love the book so much that I had to pick another quote from it. So uh, hopefully you like this one as good as the last one. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. All right. What can you do, thought Winston, against the lunatic who is more intelligent than yourself? Who gives your arguments a fair hearing and then simply persists in his lunacy? I need to drink some water. Alright, so you want me to repeat the quote real quick for you, yeah, or do you want to? Yeah, I'll hear it again. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, you're good. All right. all right. What can you do? Thought Winston against the lunatic who is more intelligent than yourself, who gives your arguments a fair hearing, and then simply persists in his lunacy. Hmm. I, do, I guess I don't know the context of this one, but my like first interpretation of it is kind of like, you know, if you're talking to someone who's, who's maybe more intelligent than you or more respected than you, and you give them like a logical argument to something, but they don't really take it to heart like they don't actually listen they just continue with what they think i guess is that kind of what this is i can give you like an example just right off the top of my head of what i perceive the quote to be like yeah okay so let's say uh let's say you're not like college educated too much like you don't read a lot of books you're not academically known like you're just like a simple guy working your simple job and you you know the sky is blue all right so you know the sky is blue just by looking at the sky right like is the sky blue andrew no no and also the world okay. is flat so yeah okay um... <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, so you think the okay yeah the sky is blue no the sky, the is, sky blue. is blue okay <laughs> okay all right the sky is blue all right uh, and then you get in a conversation with this guy who knows more big words than you. He reads more academic papers than you. He's more educated. You on paper, he's more educated. He's more fluently, eloquently speaking, per se. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, you tell him the sky is blue. This guy ponders it for a second and then goes no it's red sky's red and this is why and then he'll give you all the fucking reasons in the world while it's why it's red and then you look at the sky and it's blue that's basically the gist of the of the quote that's the yeah. best way i can kind of i mean that's not from the book that's not from 1984 but uh uh that's just an example I think we've all been in a situation and can relate to that quote where something like that has occurred, right? Where somebody who is more respected or is more supposedly more intelligent and you know that you're correct, but because that person thinks that they know everything about something, they still disagree with you. Which, not not to bring up yet another douchebag quote, Okay, we just <laughs> recorded in every 19... 1984. Yeah, I don't know why all the 1984 quotes are bringing out the, the douchebag in me, but like <laughs> it makes me think of um, I read The Republic in high school by Plato. So he talks about in The Republic when you're arguing with someone, um, the beginning of the argument. And he kind of, it's not necessarily an argument, more of like a discussion, I guess, about a topic. 
you both assume that the other person is rational, right? So like your own interpretation of what rational is, is, you know, up for debate, but you know, Plato kind of describes rationality and this is like what you're kind of describing, like not a idiot, like, you know, you're not being a lunatic and you believe that things that are, are the way they are. Like the sky is blue. Yeah. The sky is blue. Like things are obvious. And like one of the things that he talks about is like, if you realize that you're the person you're discussing with or the person you're arguing with is not rational, you shouldn't continue the argument because at that point, when you realize somebody is not rational or maybe is not rational in that moment, isn't going to listen to your argument. There's no reason to continue the the conversation because you're not working on equal footing anymore. So that quote kind of makes me think of that as well. But um, I think we've all been in a situation where that's happened, but what what do you kind of think? Yeah, go ahead. I, th- I mean, think of the same way. Like this quote can be taken in, in different perspectives as as well. Because like, uh, because like you you can believe one thing. Like, like I'm gonna use uh this for an example. All right, let's say you're extremely religious, right, and you believe abortion's wrong, and so you talk to uh someone else who has different beliefs than you who agrees with abortion right and so uh you're going back and forth and then from both perspectives they both think the other is a lunatic right because they're on one hand you got the the religious who's like no that's killing a baby that's wrong and then you have the other person who's like no it's not it's just not even an infant yet it's whatever it's not even really alive and so it's not wrong so uh from this quote's point of view it would it really makes you think and of yourself is like what internal biases do i have and is that am i thinking rationally when i'm confronted with a different point of view you know so i'm not saying whether abortion's good or bad i'm just using that as an example uh for for this for the argument's sake or for discussion's sake no i i think I agree with like, you got to analyze yourself and be like, okay, you got to keep it, keep it within the realm of rationality. But also I feel like it's really relevant for now because people generally nowadays, especially discussing sensitive topics, it doesn't necessarily have to be politics, but any kind of sensitive topic. I feel like nowadays people just kind of yell at each other, right? Like they don't really listen to each other and they don't really actually have a rational discussion they just kind of stick to what they think and then if something doesn't fit what they think even if it's backed by science or backed by whatever um they still don't believe it right they'll just find anything they can yeah believe it based off their bias so um well then it also i feel like like with that discussion too it also gets with like what kind of research what kind of academia is being is being used because there's a lot of yeah. lots of like research out there that's for profit yeah. and doesn't like for instance for like tobacco smoking i remember uh hearing about this like a lot of big tobacco companies would have research studies saying that secondhand smoke doesn't lead to cancer right yeah and yeah. and so then so you'd have research studies of scientists and stuff agreeing with that statement. So then it it always gets down to where, when it comes to like those kind of arguments is like who's profiting off these research studies yeah. and what kind of studies are being done. And when and, and the reason I'm bringing, I'm not just bringing that up for no reason. So when it comes to like that whole sense and with this quote talking about, I'll just repeat it one more time. What can you do, thought Winston, against the lunatic who is more intelligent than yourself, who gives your arguments a fair hearing, and then simply persists in his lunacy? So, using that tobacco, big tobacco like research, as an example of saying secondhand smoke doesn't give you uh, cancer or doesn't, doesn't lead at least to it a little bit. Uh, and seeing how that's completely wrong 
and that's a re- and that's a research study that was done and 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 was out there and people were using that as evidence so it's it's almost like you got you got to know like when it comes to what you believe as well you just you got to know where are you getting your information from and and who like i said earlier like who's profiting off it uh because you don't want to be a loon <laughs> you don't just want to take everything at face value but not everybody everybody not everyone's just going to see a research study and then be like oh I'm going to read, uh, not every single person is going to read it all of whatever, whatever it is. Uh, lots of people don't do that. And a lot of times you got to pay to even get us to even get the study. And it's like, why am I going to pay 30 bucks to read this when someone already did and told me about it? Right. And, the, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, th- those were just like rambling kind of, I don't even know. Did that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> with no, it the, makes a lot of sense. With this quote. That, that I don't made know. me think of like the study thing where like, you know, we don't know who's paying for it and like it's really important to understand the bias of what is who's funding the, the study. It makes me think of like fitness and like fad diets. Oh like, my god. Yeah, like certain diets that like they come out with a new study and they're like, Oh, this diet is the one diet. And there's only been like maybe one or <laughs> one or two studies. Because <laughs> um, generally, I feel like when you have a large body of, of evidence, a large amount of studies, right? Um, yeah. You can generally, you know, trust it a little more because you have a variety of studies, a variety of funding sources, a variety of different peer-reviewed scientists or doctors or whatever it is who've looked at it and said yeah i agree with this right there's enough people who are like okay yeah this is probably correct so you can kind of ascertain that there's some kind of conclusion you can draw from it but like yeah when i think of like fitness diets it's like people take one or two studies and they just run <laughs> with it <laughs> well it's how... like first avocados are bad and then they're yeah, good for and then you they're bad so... and then and then like now like um like they're even saying like fruit is bad at one point like bananas are whole and like yeah of course yeah. fruit and stuff has like sugar in it which isn't generally good for you but yeah but I mean, there's yeah there's dying. a difference between yeah <laughs> yeah there's <laughs> the difference between natural natural sugar and artificial sugar exactly yeah like there's not people dying from eating like bananas every week their whole life <laughs> <laughs> unless you're allergic <laughs> unless you're allergic or whatever yeah but like yeah, so I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. Like you, you need to gonna... understand how much research has been done on the subject, what kind of source, like who's funding it, and the validity yeah. of who's even performing it, right? Like if the yeah, doctor like... who's doing it has a history of just saying random dumbass shit, then like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think of like Dr. Oz, that guy's an idiot, but he's a yeah. doctor. He's a doctor, but like, is who, he intelligent? Who fucks Doctor Oz? Uh, he's that like talk show guy that like a lot of. Oh okay. You mean like a Doctor Phil? And, like the he's kind of like Doctor Phil, but he's more medical, like food stuff based. Is that is that that uh that small like Asian doctor on the fat 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 shows? No, that he's guy? white. But I think I know who you're talking about, oh, okay. the Asian guy. But no, he's a doctor as the white guy but yeah he's a dumbass but <laughs> yeah. that, that little the little asian doctor is a savage dude like he'll have like people will come back to his office and he'll be like well you should have lost this amount of weight why why haven't you done it are you not sticking to the diet They're like no i'm sticking to the diet and he's like you're fucking lying Jesus. i mean he doesn't stay like that but he's a fucking <laughs> he's like the uh gordon ramsay of dieting i guess um, yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, my five hundred pound life or something oh, like that. Okay, one of those shows. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm gonna yeah. I'm I'm gonna give both of us props for being uh the least amount of political in in this in this video as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I've been just trying to avoid anything really yeah. too sensitive to like for a book club. <laughs> oh no, I agree. I mean, I don't think that's our purpose. Is, I don't think our purpose yeah. is to weigh in on those things, but I think we can analyze Definitely like, not. the way that information is like disseminated and like spread is like flawed. Clearly. Yeah. 
my my goal is for people to not know what i believe and that's how i want to keep it yeah (laughs) i'd rather yeah i agree but no i think that's a another really good quote and i think we definitely need to read that book at some point because i unfortunately didn't get to read it in high school but yeah that kind of sucks i mean i read it i think i even read it in middle school too no, yeah, we didn't read it in middle I school. Know. I read like you know, To Kill a Mockingbird. We read uh, Catcher in the Rye. Um, I'm trying to think what I can't even remember what else we read. But yeah. did you read? Because I know we went to different middle schools. But did you read Fahrenheit four fifty one? Yeah, I read for, Fahrenheit yeah. four fifty one. I can't remember if that was high school or if that was. No, that was yeah, that was probably middle school. But yeah, read I that. fucking love dystopians. Like, yeah, I have all these books are on my shelf right now brave new world oh i love brave new world yeah. now that that would be a quite a touchy subject about that that book in modern times <laughs> yeah we'll read um brave new world and we'll read the communist manifesto and then we'll read oh yeah uh, <laughs> mein Kampf, and then we'll read oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll read the possessed uh by Frodor Dovitsky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do, you, do you know about that book? No, I've never even heard of that. I'll look it up. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, we'll... <laughs> I have that book too. I haven't. It's about. Um, oh, fuck, I think it's. No, I don't want to say it because I don't think I. I don't want to mix it up with another one of my books, so I'll need to double check. Is he uh, Russian? It sounds Russian. Yeah. I think it's about. Uh, if this is the one I'm thinking of, I think it's about like the rise of uh, communism in Russia. Mm, I think okay. it's called. Whereas, the like the gul- the Gulag archipelagos and shit. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, it's called the possessed uh, parentheses the devils by four door. Oh God, I'm butchering this. It's F Y O D O R, and then. His last name Dovsitsky is like D O S T O Y E V S K Y. Okay. Yeah, I just looked. Up. Oh, he wrote uh, the brothers Karamazov as well, which is like I've heard the brothers Karamazov is like one of the best books ever written, like this period. I I got this book, The Possessed, a long time ago. I just haven't. I I didn't have the time to really go through it. And I hope my description of that of it earlier. I hope I'm not thinking of a different book because then I'm going to look like a real jackass. Um, it's, <laughs> like, yeah, it right says it's an allegory of the potential consequences of political and moral nihilism that was in Russia in the 1860s. So, um, this seems interesting. Well, maybe I'll... one of these days oh, we'll I get see. to a lot of these books and stuff too. But... I don't know if we'll go through this one. This one's a little more. Uh, maybe for us <laughs> for book club yeah. i mean for we'll see we'll see who knows who it. knows what we'll be reading we got in the so future. much fantasy stuff we want to get through first and yeah but uh non-fiction might just bore the shit out of anyone who's actually listening to this i don't know <laughs> yeah all right if we all right if we read if we ever read the Communist Manifesto in Mein Kampf, then we got to read the U.S. Constitution and the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, I also God. have, and I also have, uh, I have, oh yeah, <laughs> the a thesaurus. Yeah. We should, sure? that'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, I, I have uh, the Dictionary of Demons. Ooh, I haven't gone cool. through it yet, but yeah, so I got I got that. I got the Bible. I have uh analogy and an, no, angelology. I like I like uh I like learning about this shit. It just intrigues me. Is the dictionary of demons that just like talking about like biblical demons or is it Well, ba- basically I think it's basically an overview about demons in general. So demons are typically biblical anyway, so it is going to go it does go into into it. Um, I 
Oh wow. I'm trying to just get to like a quick intro. Did you look it up? Yeah, so there's yeah, this sounds really cool. It's alphabetical yeah, cool. and they have more than fifteen hundred demons that are introduced, explored, and cross referenced by theme. That seems really cool. It is. It's it's interesting to learn to learn about. I just like learning about this shit. Uh I'm almost done with that angelology book. Angelology. That that one just basically goes through a timeline of like angels and Satan and stuff throughout the Bible and it's a pretty interesting book. Uh all right, we're getting way off topic. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I also have uh, the greatest works of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, I know we talked about that one. We'll definitely have to do that. Uh, but, that's uh, so funny. I I want to keep going, but I don't I don't think we have anything left on the uh, on this quote. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you getting those quotes though. Those are, that was that, this one was really good as well. So. Yeah, I well like the last couple quotes have been really like perverted, so I needed <laughs> I needed something to kind of like balance it out so it's not just oh click on a video oh they're talking about this again <laughs> some stephen king stuff <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah you're setting the bar high you've picked good quotes so i'm gonna have to I'll have to pick some out that are good you say that but i don't know if you ever will <laughs> <laughs> i'm just fucking with you uh, one of these days ah uh, well is that was all you got. That was George Orwell's quote in 1984. <laughs> nice. This has been quotes of interest. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. If you did, see ya.